everybody. Um, happy Monday, and welcome to another OpenShift Commons briefing. And as we like to do on Mondays, we have an AMA with one of the many upstream um, projects. Um, this today is Claire, um, which has been associated with uh, Quay and Project Quay as well. But um, we're going to get an update on that project from three of the key folks from that team. And um, there's Alex and Hank Donay and Louis. De Los Santos is going to take us through um, what's going on in the Claire community and give us an update on the latest release. So um, ask your questions in the chat. We'll have live Q&A at the end and we'll try and answer as we go as well in the chat. So um, feel free to ask and post questions there. So without any further ado, Louis, take it away, introduce your cohort and um, tell us all about what's been going on in the Claire community. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Louis. Today, Hank, Aless, and I will be presenting uh, the recent work we've been doing to rejuvenate the Claire application uh, and its community. I am a principal engineer on Claire along with Hank, and Alex works on EXD Cloud uh, in the PNT organization. Uh, in this talk, we're going to go over what Claire is, why you should Claire care about Claire, how Claire works internally. How to move from Claire v2 to Claire v4, where Claire is being used today, the v4.1 roadmap, how to contribute, and then we're going to end with uh, an Ask Me Anything. So what is Claire, right? Uh, Claire is a set of scalable services for container security. Uh, it can be used by both developers and operations to understand any vulnerabilities that might affect uh, your container builds. Uh, it's open source and it is community developed. So why does Claire matter, right? Um, as most of you know, we're moving uh, to distributing applications in containers. Before this, it's more likely that you would deploy applications on servers, right? Be to use Ansible or some kind of configuration management and deploy your application there. If you had issues, um, vulnerable, vulnerable dependencies on those uh, deployments, the splash damage was confined. They were confined to the servers you deployed it on. Now that we're shipping containers as the default way um, to package and deploy applications, we're now pushing those vulnerabilities to anywhere those containers run. Uh, this uh, should become apparent that your organization's posture around container security becomes pretty important. Um, there's also something to be said about the recent supply chain attacks, uh, the SolarWinds hack. Obviously, when you're moving to a centralized repository where your artifacts go for deployment, that repository can become subject to attack, as you probably are aware of if you've been following any of that. So what's new in Claire v4? Um, so previously in Claire v2, uh, the API was layer-based. You were responsible to handle the parent-child relationship of layers. That became a little bit cumbersome, so we moved to a manifest-focused API. As you can imagine, the uh, manifest structure itself expresses that child-parent relationship of the layers, so the client no longer needs to. It's much more intuitive uh, to deal with um, that schema versus having to deal with the layer pushes yourself. Claire v4 has content addressability as a first-class citizen. I put a little star there because it plays a key role uh, in Claire v4, and it's a concept in the rest of this talk. Uh, I was introduced to content addressability uh, in the service, in the storage domain, rather. Um, and what it is, is it's a way to have a unique identifier always associate with a unique resource. I think a good way to put that in context is uh, a checksum of some binary data. Um, as long as the binary bits don't change, you can be sure that that checksum identifies the data at hand. Claire utilizes this, and you'll learn more about this uh, in, in a couple slides. We have completely updated all the security advisory data sources that we go out to. We moved away from doing any kind of ad hoc database parsing where we can't avoid it. Um, that would be JSON dumps or YAML dumps. We now favor uh, Oval as the standard, and we're able to move most of the database or data security sources to Oval, which is nice because we're able to tool 
uh, create some tooling around Oval that makes parsing pretty quick on our end. We now have a native CLI tool. We no longer depend on external repositories to provide a CLI tool for Claire. We've completely rewritten the notification subsystem. Uh, we also have baked language support into the data model from the start, and we currently support Python. We've also completely redesigned Clear v4 in a microservice architecture with an emphasis on scale and performance. Uh, this allows operators to asymmetrically scale Clear, uh, whether it's a push-heavy day or whether it's a read-heavy day. Those two functionalities of Clear can be scaled asymmetrically and, and really conform to your performance characteristics and trends. So how Claire works. This is the 30,000 foot view of what Claire does, right? Uh, there is a container. We'll use container and manifest somewhat interchangeably. Manifest is just our JSON schema. It represents a container. Uh, and Claire is broken up into three services, the indexer, the matcher, and the notifier. The indexer is responsible for taking a manifest or a container and parsing out the contents, you know, typical things like packages, repositories, what uh, distribution those containers are representing. And it places these contents in a report that we dubbed the index report. The matcher, on the other hand, is um, responsible for generating reports of flagged content. So when the matcher gets a request saying, hey, does this manifest have uh, any vulnerabilities affecting it, it goes to the index and says, hey, do you even have an index report to this for this uh, manifest? If you do, can I have it? So when it receives it, it goes to its database and just sees that there's any flagged content, uh, packages, uh, distributions, repositories. It'll take all that flagged content and it'll place it into an ultimate vulnerability report and return that to the client. And the notifier just hangs out down there. He watches the matcher and the indexer, uh, and he identifies new updates that come into the system and, um, and then asks the indexer, like, hey, do these vulnerabilities that have just entered the system, do they affect any manifests I care about? And if they do, they'll send a notification to any subscribed clients. So let's dig into indexing a little bit deeper. Um, indexing is a term we use for extracting the contents of a container. A quick explanation of what a container is in the context of Claire v4. A container can be viewed as a content addressable hash with layers um, inside that hash. It's like a container object and then layers uh, are content addressable as well. The 604A hash here represents a high-level manifest, and the subsequent layers you see are also content addressable. Um, the order of the layers themselves are dependent, and again, that is expressed in our new manifest API. So how does indexing actually work? Uh, first thing that happens is Claire needs to identify if the manifest should be scanned. When Claire gets a uh, manifest submitted to it, it's going to check, hey, have I ever seen this uh, content addressable identifier, right? Have I ever seen this manifest hash before? In this case, it hasn't. So it goes, okay, yes, you should be scanned. Let's move to the next phase. Next, it determines what layers it needs to actually scan. Uh, I express a common case here in that the base layer might have been seen a million times by Claire, right? This might be a UBI8 base layer. So it says, hey, I don't need to scan this. I already saw this. But the subsequent layers, it has never seen before. So it's going to mark those as, yes, we need to scan these. I have no content available for this. When it actually goes to perform the scan, the base layer is simply just retrieved from the database. Any content we know about it is not, there's no work performed, it is just a get from the database. Uh, the subsequent layers are actually scanned. This is the process of going to fetch the layers, decompressing them, looking for package databases, uh, identifying the, the characteristics of the individual layers. Finally, it coalesces all those results into a final index report 
and it saves that. So now the next time it comes around, if it sees that, okay, the 604AC uh, index uh, manifest hash, uh, I, if it sees it again, it's going to say, okay, yes, I, I have this data. We have already scanned this. By looking at the manifest hash, it can already know I scanned all those layers, right? Because if the layers changed, the manifest hash would change. Cool. So for the matching part, I'm actually going to hand it over to Hank, who's going to uh, demonstrate this further. Hank, just give me a small cue when you want me to change the slides. Will do. Um, OK, yeah. So now that we've got this index of what's in these contents um, and its content addressed, obviously, when obviously we don't need to redo the work uh, because it won't change. But what does change over time is the vulnerabilities. There are new vulnerabilities discovered all the time. So that in this matching process is handling this uh, more rapidly changing data or the data that changes at all. Uh, yeah, so next slide. So the matching bit has two parts to it, the matchers and the updaters. The updaters feed data into the system and the matchers use uh, the data the updaters provide and uh, sort of turn into our common format. Next slide. The, uh, the matchers take the, this index report and uh, all of them in parallel examine the uh, the index report for the sorts of data they know about. So here in this in this example, we have uh, bits of code all at the same time looking for uh, rel packages, another one looking for Ubuntu packages, another looking for Alpine packages. Most of these won't find anything. And the ones that do return their results and we combine all of them together and return the matcher. Doing it this, or return the uh, report. Doing it this way means we can just sort of additively add bits to look at new parts. So for example, our language support is implemented as a, uh, as a box on this second row here and any sort of OS just uh, automatically gains that support because of doing it this way. Uh, and these are all then uh, fed and kept under the same, the same hash as the uh, index report. So we gain the same, same uh, sort of content addressability benefits there. Uh, next slide, please. And updaters, updaters uh, just on whatever interval an operator has it config configured for, uh, sort of check if there's a new version of the data source they care about. And if it is, fetches it, parses it, loads it into the database for you. And then any new matching requests will use that version of the data. Uh, we know internally whether uh, a matcher has been run against uh, the latest version that's in the database or a previous version. And if it's not run against the latest one, it'll run again and save the results for you. So even if these updaters are run on a staggered interval, you'll always have the uh, latest version of the results and you won't redo uh, the work that you've already done. So next slide, on to notifications. Um, and uh, like I was saying, because we sort of keep track of the versions of the security databases or when we update them, uh, we can internally figure out what's been added or removed and then work backwards to figure out which manifests we've seen uh, that we were affected by uh, what's been added. 
so the notifier effectively diffs these two versions of the database, discovers the vulnerabilities, and then looks at the manifests, and then does some sort of configurable action to issue notifications, whether that's issue a webhook or push it out to a message broker like uh, AMQP or Stomp or something like that. Uh, next slide, I believe is, oh, sorry, I skipped over a whole bunch of topics without uh, viewing slide changes. Here we go, moving from Claire V2 to Claire V4. So Claire V2 is the uh, most widely used version uh, out in the wild. Uh, that's what powers Quay.io. Um, so in the process of building the new version, we ended up actually rewriting just about everything. Uh, so the API is completely different. Again, it's manifest driven, not sort of layer stitching. Um, and all of our internal data is completely different. So you do have to resubmit images to Claire, um, but you know it should be faster. So a little initial pain and some uh, win on the back end. Uh, and now uh, I'm going to hand it off to Alesh. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alesh, and I will tell you something about how we use and uh, release Claire at Red Hat. Uh, next slide, please. So, as you might know, uh, and you already heard, uh, Claire is an open source uh, project for uh, container security um, scanning, but it's also part of Red Hat Quay product. Um, Red Hat Quay is a container registry for the enterprise uh, that brings solution for storing and building container images. And since the like, security point of view is essential part of for the container workflow, Quay has integration with Claire and it provides information about vulnerable content in both user interface and the API. So if you either build or push container into Quay uh, registry, uh, Claire in the background index the image and produce index of, and vulnerability uh, report as was described earlier. Uh, those reports are visible in a user interface and the user can check uh, whether their container is vulnerable and whether they need to rebuild the container to update the latest version. Um, in the previous version, um, of Quay, Claire V2 was used uh, up until Quay uh, V3.3, where Claire version 4 uh, was available as a tech preview, and it becomes default a container security uh, tool moving forward. So in Claire version, Claire version 4, version 4 is released uh, as a GA in Quay 3.4, and Claire version 2 is deprecated. Next slide, please. Um, Claire is also available in a public instance of Quay, which is known as Quay.io, and uh, Claire version 4 will be used as a default scanner uh, at the end of uh, March 2021. Next slide, please. And Red Hat not only releases Claire and offers, offers it to customers, but we also use it uh, uh, internally and we are integrating it uh, in our uh, container release pipeline. Uh, this means that every image that is produced by Red Hat or uh, ISV partner is scanned using Claire uh, security scanning tool and um, the, the release process is driven by the results. So if we uh, discover um, vulnerability into the report, we don't ship the, con uh, ship the container and instead we rebuild uh, the container because we don't want to um, uh, ship um, content that is vulnerable to customers. Our container security information is also publicly available uh, in Red Hat uh, Container Ecosystem Catalog and it's represented by so-called freshness grade, um, which is simplified and uh, graphical representation of uh, 
container security score. Uh, it's a scale from A to F. Um, previously in a Red Hat, we used a custom solution for uh, container scanning, uh, but uh, since it was completely internal and we didn't have, um, or our customers didn't have a way how to reproduce our grades, uh, in 2019, we replaced the custom solution with unofficial version, uh, Claire version 3. And last year in October 2020, we upgrade, upgraded to the current uh, latest version of Claire, Claire version 4. Um, our instance of Claire is deployed in an OpenShift uh, cluster on the production scale as a three separate services, one uh, service for indexer, one for matcher, and one for notifier. Uh, that allows us to easily scale up or scale down uh, those services based on the load. In the past three years, uh, Red Hat built over 1 million of images and currently in our production database, Claire version 4 indexed over 400,000 of them. Okay, um, now let's hand it over back to Lois. So let's go over what we expect from uh, Claire v4.1. Claire v4 hit GA a couple weeks ago, so this is a roadmap for the uh, next minor version. Uh, we'd like to expand on language support quite a bit. Uh, I believe there are some plans already for Java, which are going to make its way in via another uh, collaboration with code-ready containers. Uh, we'd like to address Golang and deflegate some JavaScript uh, the Node NPM ecosystem in there. Uh, Hank is currently plugging away vigorously on a Kubernetes operator, uh, which should just make the deployment of Claire and the various architectures that you can deploy Claire in pretty trivial to set up. Uh, we're going to put an emphasis on performance and scale analysis. So we really want to know, you know, how well Claire scales um, in the event of uh, excess traffic, uh, trendy and bursty traffic. Um, so we'll be putting a lot of effort into that. And then just general reliability efforts, things like making sure database connections don't flood, um, you know, the downstream database and uh, making sure we really push the right errors forward so clients can react to the various states of Claire. So for co contributions, uh, we're going to begin community development meetings at a bi-weekly cadence uh, starting in March. I will have a link um, to those meetings um, in a subsequent uh, email burst along with a mailing list uh, blast and other ways that we go about um, disseminating that information. Uh, there's a quick link to our mailing list. I would go follow this if you are interested in community development or further OpenShift briefing meetings. Uh, we'll definitely be posting there. Uh, we'll also be placing um, a lot of information in the repository, which is uh, Quay Claire, uh, the discussions area of that. We'll be placing a lot of information about how to uh, interact with the community moving forward. Uh, and then, yeah, there's just a couple contacts here. Um, and if you need to reach out to us, these are our emails. And then there's a general way email. So that kind of wraps it up. I hope that was informative, uh, filled you in on, you know, the work we've been doing on Claire before. Well, thank you very much, guys, for joining today. Um, I'm wondering, Hank, if you have, um, and if, if there's a repo for the Kubernetes operator, if there's an ETA for that, and um, if there's, if you need people to test that from the community. And what your um, not yet. I'm still, it's still in like half broken uh, building uh, phase. When you get ready for that, let me know. Um, there's a lot of folks um, and that we can reach out to and get them to test that for you and on different platforms and different this you know Kubernetes. Yeah, we will do. Um, our our ultimate goal is to make it sort of seamless into the Claire operator. Um, so if you install the yeah the uh, yeah sorry Quay operator the uh, Quay operator it pulls it in 
sort of transparently behind the scenes and get all the sort of scalability benefits of something that understands Claire's workload, but is just comes along for free with your uh, container uh, registry. And Lewis, you were talking about um, performance and scale analysis, and mm -hmm. and and trying to get some um, better a better grip around you know how how Claire was doing out there in the wild. If there's folks out there um, who want to work with you on that or give you feedback on that, um, what's the best place? That, is it the Claire mailing list to reach out to folks to do that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that would that would be really great. If, if this does pique anyone's interest, they can definitely contact us in a, in a couple places. Definitely posting anything on the mailing list uh, will get our attention. GitHub issues or GitHub discussions will get our attention pretty immediately. Or just shoot us an email and, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at that. Um, but yeah, there's a couple options right now. All of them should uh, be pretty viable. I know that the use of it in-house, uh, Alice um, referenced the uh, a million images scanned um, with inside of Red Hat, or we have created a million. I think we've created more than that. But um, personally, I think I might have made a whole bunch of messy images that should be scanned. Um, but uh, that's growing to other organizations that can can um, utilize the performance and analysis metrics and give us feedback. Is there any telemetry being added into Claire or anything like that to, um, to, to collect that from the outside external? Yeah, I think um, Claire uh, is capable to um, send the metrics into uh, Jagger. Uh, it's like building a feature. And of course, things like, um, like making logs available in the system that uh, can easily make a dashboard uh, out of it. For example, in our use case, we use uh, Elk Stack together, like together with Kafka. Uh, so we are able to see some metrics uh, directly in the Kibana dashboard. Okay. And. Um, I'm going to read out one of the questions. I know you answered it in the chat, but I'm going to read it out for people who might be watching the video here um, later. Um, will the expanded language support for Java, et cetera, include sources outside of Red Hat, i.e. Maven Central, or will it be primarily focused on libraries that Red Hat supports? And Lewis had a nice answer to that. Yeah, definitely. So Claire takes an open source approach to begin with. Um, so all the data that we collect are independently upstream managed. And the reason we do that is because the most accurate data is the source of the data, right? So we go out to um, you know, pulp manifests for Red Hat data. Uh, we'll go out to the Ubuntu security tracker for Ubuntu data. We are pretty adamant on um, not using quote unquote closed sourced um, or aggregated data. We really do want to keep um, a consistency and a level of accuracy by going to the sources. So the long-winded way of answering your question, definitely, we will go out to, um, you know, Maven Central or any of the official sources that we can find. Um, as long as we can grab the data in an open source way, um, any kind of closed source data sources, we have to open up to more of a, um, a discussion around how that could work. Um, but we haven't had that happen yet. Yeah, I know for me, it's always annoying to find a piece of software that looks like it does exactly what I want, only to find out that there's some sort of hurdle in the way and you need to go get a key, plug it in and use it. Um, that's not to say we don't want to, we don't want to be able to do that, uh, but we want to make sure everything we ship by default works. All the data is there. You can all the all the checkboxes in our README. You can go do without having to go sign up for another server. And there's one more question in in the chat. Um, the and this is probably top of mind for a few folks. Um, how would mm -hmm. you define the relationship between Claire and Stackrocks? Are they mutually beneficial, or is one a superset or subset of the other? 
How does this? We just had the Cube Linter folks on last week, I think, so it's probably um, topical. Yeah, so I can talk about what I know so far. I know that there's no official talks of um, how the teams will work together, but they utilize Claire V2. Uh, so we've already started discussing at a high level what Claire V4 can offer them. Um, and I imagine that there'll be a pretty tight collaboration in the future, as long as, you know, it's a little bit above my pay grade to determine those things. But as far as I can tell, they utilize Claire as a product and they would be interested in Claire V4. So we should see uh, more of a merging than a, um, you know, any kind of uh, separation or a schism between the products, I imagine that they, they would fall in line pretty well since the underlying technology they use for at least the scanning portion of their product is the same. So it works out pretty well. There's, there's another relationship where we can get more performance and scalability from people using that. So there's an, another whole chunk of the ecosystem plus more engineering resources coming um, hopefully our way to work on this, and so that yes. that's always a, always always a good thing. So um, yeah, that's, that's the most exciting part. <laughs> that's always the most exciting part. There was <laughs> one other earlier question that I just wanted to get a, re a readout on to um, for for anyone who's watching this and not in the chat was um, Murthy's question on can partners build custom matchers um, uh, or, cu or custom matchers using Python and. You had a nice answer for that too, as well, Lewis. Yeah, definitely. So we support we support remote matching, which is when in the process of of looking at the data uh, that the matcher service received um, from an index report. Not to get too technical in terminology, but um, it can take a look at those contents and then instead of looking at its own internal database, it can go out to an API. So anyone can go and write an API in, in any language you'd like. If you do want native uh, matching support, which obviously there's some advantages there, um, you will have to write it in Go at this time. And it, it will need to reside in the um, Claire repository at this time. We are working on, on a possibly allowing X out of tree matchers, so matchers that live in other repositories. Um, but yeah, if you are interested in, in the cross-platform, uh, looking into our remote matching uh, might be applicable to you. Cool. All right, well, I don't see any other questions in the chat. You said you might have a little demo to give us. Um, if you're up for that, we sure. have a little time left, and that would be great um, for yeah. those of you who haven't played with Claire. Cool, let's try it. All that for half a iota of a second. <laughs> there, there we go. Okay, cool. Yeah, so what I have here is pause. Pause for one more second. Um, there is one no, more no, question. No, no. Um, will Claire V4 be pushed to the container security operator, and if so, when? Mm -hmm. So, That's as cool. I understand it, the container security operator. Um, is written against Quay's API. So it depends on having Quay and the latest version of Quay uh, ships with Claire v4 as its uh, sort of security backend. Cool. Thanks. All right. Let's get her get her done with the demo. <laughs> cool. So what I have here is a local Claire environment. Uh, you can do this today if you want to. You can go and pull the Claire repository um, and do this command, make local dev up. Just make sure you have the necessary dependencies. We won't go into that right now. It involves Docker Compose, but you can just look at the repository for that. And what it does is it sets up Quay and Claire locally on your machine. And um, Quay lives at localhost 8080. So what we can do is we can go over here. I've already logged in. I created an admin account, and I created this organization, Claire V4.org. Uh, when you're utilizing the local environment, you can use Podman um, as far as logging in and pushing an image to the local container or the local repository. 
Uh, you'll want to specify this TLS verify false because it's a local environment. We just didn't bother to wire in SSL. Um, it just kind of gets in the way. Um, so what we can do is a login. And uh, that's at port 8080. So this will log into uh, the Quay instance that is running here. And I have a container. It's just Ubuntu latest. And we can go ahead and we can push that. You'll notice that you'll have to tag images with the local host 8080. And then we can go ahead and push that to the local Quay instance. Don't get mad at me about logging out. Okay, just got barked at me for a bit, but looks like the push is successful now. So we'll go over here and add tags. Have a new repository called testing. If you go to this tag area, you'll see that we have successfully scanned. Let me make this bigger. I'm sure it's quite small right now. Uh, this was the image we just pushed, and then Claire was able to scan it. You can go and you can dig into the security information via this GUI. Um, yeah, so if you'd like, we can just give you a quick overview of what Claire actually did. Uh, Claire indexing. Yeah, and while, while uh, Lewis pulls this up, like again, one of the cool things is because everything is driven off of this content addressability here, because Claire did the work of scanning this, this base image once, any new container that shows up, only the new layers need to get analyzed, uh, which exactly. makes it a bit snappier. Yep, makes things pretty quick. So. If we just scan through the logs right here, um, you know, you'd, pretty, you'd have to be acquainted with the application a little bit to understand. Uh, but the indexer is really going and it is, uh, it's doing an analysis on the layer, right? It didn't find an OS release file. Okay, so we couldn't identify it. So the matcher identified uh, for the AWS distribution. Oh, okay, I can't find uh, an OS release file, so I'm just going to continue. Um, so yeah, these will basically, the indexer itself is doing this. It's, it's grabbing the layers, it's identifying any items it can, and then it's storing. Uh, and then it's storing the index report. And then the Claire matcher is really just going ahead and it's, it's issuing these, these matchings. So as you can see, it's a Ubuntu image. It found that it's 92 are interested. Um, this corresponds to, in the talk, uh, Hank mentioned that, you know, most of the matchers aren't going to care, right? Because it's not like you're pushing a, a some kind of hybrid between an Oracle and a Photon uh, container. So it's nice because even though we're kind of fanning out, uh, we're not really doing a lot of work. Only one of the matchers actually wind up doing work in the common case. Um, so this is um, the, the matcher basically evaluating the pushed content. So this process uh, will return a vulnerability report, and then that vulnerability report is pretty much just parsed by Quay and presented here. Um, so yeah, you can do all this right now if you wanted to go and pull the Claire repository and play around with it. Uh, again, you will just basically go and run Yeah, you would just go and run this. And that will deploy a Quay instance at localhost 8080. If you have any troubles with that, you know, just, just, uh, we've been doing a new thing where um, if you have like quick, quick support questions, drop them on discussions, uh, Q&A on GitHub. And that seems to work pretty well. We can mark things as like, yes, this is the correct answer. Uh, but it's been a nice place to put anything really supported. You should not sir if it's a bug, right? You should put something there. We'll, we'll triage it, we'll work with you to understand you know, why your environment might not be working. Um, but yeah, uh, that's 
Square V4. Hope you like the demo. Love the demo. Um, how about if you, <laughs> you throw up the resources slide one last time so we uh, we end sure. on that so people know where to find you again. Um, yeah. And I don't know if uh, anyone else who's on the call, if there's anything we missed, Daniel or Bill or anyone else um, that we should have covered. Um, I, I think you did a great job here, guys. And so um, Thanks. I'm looking to see if there's any other questions coming in from chat, but I think we're we're good. And that to get um, a bunch of folks, hopefully listening to this out there in the universe, um, to uh, come to the community development meetings starting soon. Yes. And um, we will post this video up there along with the slides, if you share them with me, and um, tweet it out. And as always, great stuff from the Claire team, and we're really grateful for all the work that you guys do. So thanks for coming today and sharing all of this with us. Thanks a lot. All right, take care, guys.